The Construction Association of Michigan, CAM, has been helping commercial and industrial contractors and suppliers grow since 1885. They provide contractors leadership through aggressive lobbying, project reporting, safety and education training, and insurance and banking as Michigan takes first steps toward a safe start. Thank you to the companies that are returning to work with the safe work ethic that defines the construction industry. For information, visit buildwithcam.com. They are one industry, one resource, one CAM. Today's episode of CAM's Building Michigan podcast is sponsored by Priority Health, endorsed health insurance carrier for CAM members. So right now we've all been feeling lots of shifts in our lives. We've gone from crazy busy schedules to way more time with our loved ones, from commuting to the office to working from our couches. And that's okay, because Priority Health is always ready to shift right there with you. So whether you're experiencing a shift in employment or you're prepping for a new member of the family to arrive, Priority Health has you covered. Priority shift. So maybe it's time your health insurance company did too. Find your plan at PriorityHealth.com. It's that time of year. Time to review your workers' compensation plan and shift to coverage that pays you back. CAMCOM, part of the Construction Association of Michigan, is the state's leading self-insured group designed for the construction industry. The safer your employees, the more money you get back. The average payback to members is 45% of their premium. A very smart investment. Find out how safety pays with CamComp. Call Juan Ramirez at 586-790-7810 or go to www.camcomp.net. Hello and welcome to our third episode of CAM's Building Michigan podcast, produced for Michigan's construction industry by the Construction Association of Michigan, CAM. My name is Kevin Kohler. I'm the president of CAM and your host for Building Michigan. Our podcast is designed for the construction industry here in the Great Lakes State. Each 20 to 30 minute episode will feature conversations with industry leaders discussing construction projects, trends, business development, workforce, safety, legislation, products, equipment, and other industry-related topics. All right, let's get to it. Season one, episode three. Today's episode will be split into four segments, each featuring a separate interview on our topic of discussion material costs. We are excited to have with us today four top construction industry material suppliers to help us examine increasing material costs and supply chain issues that are plaguing our industry. Each of our guests will be interviewed separately. Joining us on today's program is Jay Holtz, president of Progressive Plumbing Supply Company, Doug Bemis, uh, CEO of Kniff Electric Supply, Bill Guthrie, vice president of Guthrie Lumber, and Rob Hoffman, president and COO of Wimsat Building Materials. We're going to begin our first segment with Jay Holtz from Progressive Plumbing Supply. Jay, welcome to CAM's Building Michigan podcast. Uh, Kevin, thank you very much. And, um, and uh, logging in here from the uh, front lawn of the state capitol and just uh, delighted to be with you. Well, it's fantastic. And we certainly appreciate you uh, taking the time to be with us today. Before we jump into the issue of escalating material costs and some of the supply chain problems that we're faced with today, why don't you tell us a little bit about Progressive Plumbing Supply? Who are you? What do you do? Those kinds of things. Well, uh, uh, Kevin, I describe myself as, uh, as uh, our chief toilet salesman, uh, and that that's, starts a lot of interesting conversations. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, we're a wholesale distributor. We service both the um, residential and commercial market, um, pretty much uh, stay within the um, geographic boundaries of Southeast Michigan. Uh, we have a branch in uh, Oxford, which gets us into North Oakland County, and one in the city of Detroit. And our uh, headquarters operation is in Warren. Well, Jay, I know you've been a CAM member for a long time, and we certainly appreciate you being a member and really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Uh, my first question for you today is that all I'm hearing about is the escalating material costs in construction, some of the highest that we've seen in several decades. Um, I'm wondering if you can give us ex- an example of what you're seeing in the plumbing and piping segments of the industry. 
Well, we're seeing stuff, Kevin, that we've never seen before. Uh, we've been in business about 25 years and never seen anything like this. Uh, the pricing increases are um, being driven by, in some cases, COVID-related issues and, in, and supply chain issues all the way up and down the line, as well as some um, uh, weather-related problems. Uh, and so a uh, couple of examples. Um, Water heaters are a huge category for us, a big part of our business. Typically, we'll have about a 3 to 4% price increase in January, maybe last through the year. Uh, this year, we had a 9% uh, increase in January, another 9% in March, and another 8.5% in May. And uh, so almost 30%, and this is a huge category for us. Uh, Plastic pipe and fittings, another good example. We are paying almost triple for plastic pipe uh, compared to what we paid uh, one year ago. Now, some of those things are um, weather related. The, the big storms that moved through the Gulf Coast in August uh, crippled the refinery capacity, more flooding in Louisiana, the, the freeze damage in Texas knocked down a, a lot of capacity. Um, and so uh, the supply chain and COVID issues along with the weather are what's, what seems to be the main uh, driver of that. You know, I, I, Jay, I also heard that uh, copper pipe is, is up considerably, almost double what it was this time last year. And I think we're hearing similar stories on steel pipe. It seems like it's just up in, in every category. It is true commodity uh, you know, product categories uh, that, that we are used to some volatility, especially in copper. Um, you know, if somebody catches cold down in Chile or in Papua New Guinea, uh, the copper industry, um, you know, uh, reacts to it. Uh, but yes, uh, probably, I think the last time I looked, uh, the, the uh, COMEX copper uh, futures were at about 450 a pound. We normally look for them in the 220 a pound range. Wow. Uh, steel pipe um, is up about 50%. Um, and all of these things have uh, created some panic buying situations, uh, both by distributors like us, as well as our customers who have you know, jobs that they're committed on and, uh, and need material for. Yeah, that was that that actually answers my next question. I know I, I can assume that, you know, the pandemic had some role in, in the delay in the supply chain. Um, but I was wondering about other influencing factors. I remember in Texas, the freeze and it had they happen to have some very big PVC plants in Texas. I think that had something to do with the PVC costs. Um, but I'm also hearing about hoarding. Believe it or not, I have a buddy who is in the mechanical business. And he, supply, he, he installs a lot of hot water heaters for people. And he's probably got, I don't know, a whole summer's worth of work. And he was telling me that he bought every hot water tank he could get his hands on. So he's probably we got were, 15 or 20 sitting in a warehouse ready to install. 100% agree with that. We, we were hearing from people that we traditionally never did business with. And um, uh, it, it, was, it was a hoarding mentality. And the reasons uh, as far as or contributing anyway, one of our really, really good vendors, uh, uh, Insincorator, that makes garbage disposers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of their uh, assembly staff um, are women and they were home, homeschooling kids or taking care of, uh, you know, elderly parents or whatever. And uh, deliveries went from two weeks to 12 weeks, like, you know, about the snap of your fingers. Wow. So what do you, what do you, what do you see happening in the future? Obviously this is impacting the cost, the current cost of construction. Um, I assume it'll be impacting the future cost of construction. Do you see construction slowing because of this? Do you see, um, the supply chain issues and the costs, you know, the escalating costs stabilizing, maybe going back down once the supply chain gets filled? What Nothing you, ever goes yeah. down as fast as it goes up, um, but um, I, I've got to believe there's going to be some relief at some point. To answer the first part of your question, uh, we have seen projects that have uh, slowed down a little bit more on the residential side. Uh, I've seen instances of foundations 
that have been poured and they haven't put a stick of lumber on the job uh, because of the cost of lumber. Um, uh, contractors who have, who have bid con contracts that, uh, that can't get some relief and some sort of escalation, uh, I think they're gonna be under an awful lot of pressure. Yeah, I, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you about was, um, you know, what what advice you're giving to your contractors or your this, you know, the contractors that are buying from you. Number one, and then number two, I think escalation clauses are uh, almost a have to do right now for the subcontracting community. I I think so, and owners don't like to hear it naturally. Uh, general contractors who are in direct contact with owners don't like to hear it, but. The last thing you want on your job is a subcontractor that is uh, expecting to um, lose money on the job because he's going to do what he can to not lose money. And sure. uh, uh, so you, you, you don't you don't want that either. Uh, one more. Another question for you. Um, what advice would you give these guys when they're trying to navigate? You know, I, I think you had mentioned to me before about staying close with your supplier and, and, and I love your, your attitude about paying on time too. So maybe you can elaborate just briefly on that. <laughs> well, we, we joke about uh, in the plumbing wholesale business that we're nothing more than a bank that owns delivery trucks. And, um, and sometimes that's the case, but uh, the essence of it is communication. Uh, we, we are uh, right on the firing line as far as finding out when the uh, price increases are going into effect. In some cases, uh, we, can, um, we can get some help from a uh, vendor as far as price protection, but in a lot of cases, uh, they're under the same kind of pressure and, and we just can't. And um, so uh, uh, communicate both upstream and downstream with your uh, customers and vendors and let them know uh, the kind of pressure that you're under. Uh, back to the, the thing, uh, nobody really wants to be uh, working with someone who knows they're gonna lose money on a job uh, because they don't wanna do that. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally understood. Well, uh, Jay, what one closing question for you? Have you heard of anything being trying to be pushed uh, politically that could could change some of this stuff, or that could put a cap on some of these, you know, like lumber costs, which are spinning out of control? I um, you hear bits and pieces of that. I candidly, in our industry, uh, have not. Um, many of the uh, or some of the bigger raw material suppliers have. Uh, declared force majeure, uh, which uh, which uh, enables them to, you know, essentially cancel contracts um, because of this act of God, if you will. Uh, so uh, I, I have not heard of any regulatory uh, uh, solutions to this. Yeah, I, I've I've heard of some some talk of it, but I haven't seen anything specific. So it'll be interesting to see what unfolds. Um, Gee, kind of in closing, do you have any words of wisdom for our listeners today? Um, uh, for our listeners who are general contractors, I would say understand that your subcontractor is in demand and make sure you manage your relationship with them well and with your suppliers. Uh, for, our, uh, for our listeners who are subcontractors or suppliers, just do everything you can to stay out in front of this. Uh, in some cases, what we've done is uh, ordered material in, uh, worked with the owner on being able to bill for stored material. Uh, carrying costs are a lot less expensive than, you know, a 10% price increase. So uh, the essence is communicate. I think that's, that's sage advice. Jay, on behalf of all of us at CAM, thank you for being with us today on Building Michigan's podcast. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Great, great to see you. Good to see you too. And in this segment, we welcome Doug Bemis, CEO of Kniff Electric Supply. Doug, welcome to CAMS Building Michigan podcast. Thank you very much. I'm proud to be, uh, glad to be on here. And I understand you have a guest with you there. Uh, yeah, I do. I have, I, have, I have Marcel Doan, who is uh, 
been in the uh, electrical supply business for 45 years. 45 years. Um, he is a commodities buyer and um, very knowledgeable of uh, electrical products and thought he would his input would be great in the questions you're about to ask. Well, I think that'll be perfect. And before we get into talking a little bit about material cost and, and supply chain issues, if there are any in the electrical supply world, and I assume there probably are, uh, why don't you tell us just real briefly about Kniff Electric Supply? So Kniff Electric Supply uh, opened in 1982. Um, and, you know, father and son, uh, my dad and I started in 82. And over the years, you know, put every dollar we made back into the business and kept growing and acquiring good, good talent and good people. And proud to say today we're uh, over a hundred million in revenues and we have, uh, I think about 90 employees and we have uh, three, uh, three locations. So we're, uh, we're, well, that's we're very, very fortunate to have a great team and, uh, and, and, and even more fortunate to have great customers. Fantastic. You've been a member of CAM for a lot of those years, if not all of them, and we certainly appreciate you continuing to be a member. And uh, I think our membership and our listeners today will get a lot of value out of our, our conversation over the next few minutes. Well, thank you. Um, sure. Uh, let's let, let's get started. I mean, really, we're here to talk about material cost increases. Uh, as you guys know, I've spoke to a few others. I spoke to um, uh, people in the in the plumbing industry, in the lumber industry, in the general building supply industry, and we're all a little bit concerned about the escalation of costs and some of the supply chain issues. Guys, what are you seeing in the electrical supply business? Are we seeing some cost increases? Uh, are there some supply chain issues? And maybe you can tell us a little bit about, you know, what's what's affecting you or what the issues are. Yeah, hi, this is Marcel Dohn. Uh, we've been experiencing. Uh, pretty rampant uh, increases over the last six to nine months, well above the norm. Uh, you know, in the past few years, it's always been maybe one increase, two at the most in the course of a year with uh, increases only being around 3%. But uh, like I said, this past uh, nine months, I mean, we've had upwards of some manufacturers, seven increases, like almost like a monthly oh. increase. And they've been ranging anywhere from six to 12 percent each time uh, we've had uh, like our copper wire has doubled in price in the last uh, six months steel has doubled pvc i'm sure your plumbing guy had to talk about pvc it's gone up like triple on us so it's had to go up uh, somewhere to him so it's just these increases are far uh, outweighing the normal inflation that we've seen in the past and it's extremely tough to make decisions as to how much should we buy to protect ourselves and to protect our customer base so that they're not losing money on the jobs that they've bid maybe a few months ago back when the pricing was one level and here it is now a whole new level yeah i'm, I'm hearing that a lot from contractors you know they're trying to get escalation clauses our commercial guys are a little bit better about that than maybe some of the residential guys but uh they're trying to get escalation causes built into the contracts. And, and in some instances, and it sounds like it's happening in your business, uh, like I've heard from others, the price changes are almost daily or weekly or, you know, a couple of months. So it's it's impossible to, uh, to anticipate, you know, like you said, the standard 3% increase every six months or every year. It's very difficult. Do you think these are, guys, do you think these are supply chain issues based on what happened during the pandemic or as a result of the pandemic or... You know, some guys are telling me it's a perfect storm. It's supply chain. It's what happened in Texas, because I think that's where most of the PVCs manufactured and a lot of the chemicals. And they had the big freeze. Um, there's trucking shortages. There's all the above. And, and homeowners started building like crazy during the pandemic. No one anticipated that. And it sucked a lot of supplies, too. I don't know. So I guess I'm asking you, is that what's happening in your neck of the woods or or what are your observations? On yeah, that? Um, well, personally, we feel it's like it's a combination of the pandemic did affect uh, the manufacturers quite a bit in the sense that they had to shut down plants at times, which then slowed down the production and having to bring in more people. Uh, so it affected us a lot on that end. But as for the increases themselves, I mean, it's due to the fact of the, the raw materials, copper's up, steel's up, the PVC. But again, the PVC resin, like you had said, was what happened in Texas. 
uh, but I don't think that was more non non pandemic that affected that. Um, and naturally, then these manufacturers also are seeing you know the lumber. So that means like in the wire world, all the wood reels the manufacturers are buying. Um, we hear that they're like yeah, lumber. Pretty, pretty. to build a house is like thirty some thousand dollars more to do a house than what it was. So they're affected on that pallets, uh, any kind of crating. It, it's just like a major domino effect. One thing after another just keeps pounding and now they're just basically saying we can't continue to absorb those. What may have been only a couple percent increase that are just astronomical increases. So they're just throwing them at us so quick. And I, like earlier we had talked about the, the amount of changes. You're, like, you're used to a commodity like copper. You have to monitor that daily. But a normal product of steel fittings or the PVC boxes or uh, even steel boxes, that kind of stuff, you, you're you used to price holding for quite some time. And that's just not the case anymore in that. So it's it's it's, it's a combination of uh, all these things in that. Uh, can't really point to any one thing, uh, but I don't think with the pandemic, with the uh, changing that's occurring, you know, the masks coming mm -hmm. off and all that, is that gonna stop the increases? No, I think in one way we're probably going to continue because you can't get people to come back to work and it's going to cost you more to get them to work, which means higher labor costs. Who ends up paying that? The end users. So we all end right. up that's, that's on that. Theme. I'm, hearing that. I'm hearing that from a lot of people uh, about, you know, people not wanting to get back to work. What do you, I mean, what are you guys telling your contractors? That Are you telling them to, to try to get escalation clauses or you know, check before they make a bid you know, on the on the price of the day, or I mean, what are you giving them any tips or any help with, you know, how to deal with this well, stuff? I think some of them have been fortunate enough to have customers that understand and, and are a little forgiving and probably help them. Majority of them say, you know, it's basically sorry you quoted it. That's the price I'm going to pay for it. Um, we were yeah. fortunate. That we have some customers who had the insight through help, you know, with discussions with us about what was coming that we, we have 125 or 150,000 square foot uh, facility in Detroit that we, we bought a ton of material seeing this was coming and bought it at the right price and were able to pass that on to our customers so they could still sell the product to their customers at what was quoted. So that, that's helped tremendously, but you know it, it, we've had to acquire more space to, to have the room to accommodate the, the thousands of square foot of pipe and wire and stuff that we pre-purchased to uh, have for uh, the right number. Um, well, I'll tell you, you know, if I was one of the contractors that bought from you and you did that, you know, or, or you were in conversations with them and you knew it was coming up, I think that's, that's a huge asset to, uh, to the subcontractor or the, uh, or the prime contract in that respect. So I, I think that's fantastic. What do you guys think about, I mean, obviously the law of supply and demand affects this a lot. And right now the, the demand is high and the supply is lower. I mean, when do you, do you anticipate this, you know, stabilizing or potentially coming back down to reality at some point? And, and when would you anticipate that happening? Well, I, I personally think it's going to, but I don't really foresee it uh, coming down into some kind of a more norm until the first summer starts, the first to the end of the first quarter of next year. I think we're going to struggle through this all through the balance of 2021. And then 2022, well, hopefully at least some things will get back to more normality. Yeah. That's exactly what I've heard in, in the other interviews, too. People are thinking Q2 of 2022 before things start to stabilize. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you think this will affect, uh, you know, the future of construction, at least the immediate future? Do you think we may see a, a slowing in construction because of the rise or the escalation in costs? Well, I've been actually quite surprised, you know, I've mentioned to Doug that with what it's gone up already, that we haven't seen anything get canceled or postponed to the back burner. Everything is still moving forward. <clears throat> and see, we're hearing even still more projects are still coming forward, even though they're over budget and they're going to proceed, uh, you know, on course. But I think what concerns me the most that I look at is with all these increases, inflation that if inflation continues to run rampant, it's inevitable that the government's going to start uh, raising interest rates, the Fed. And if that occurs, I think the combination of the higher prices and if the cost of uh, handling money and borrowing money goes up, that would start to kill some projects, is my fear. 
I think we're looking for anybody that's been around in the industries long enough, uh, going back to the 70s with Carter, and that inflation was extremely high back then, and that seemed to shut down a lot of stuff back then. And I think you know we could have it worse than that because that was energy that was causing that problem. That's mm -hmm. a, an opinion of mine that I think that an observation that we have to watch as a company. No, uh, I, I I hear that a lot, and I I agree with you for sure. Um, guys, any is there any um, from the electrical standpoint? Is there any talk of you know, any political, you know, trying to get the legislators to cap pricing on copper or anything like that you've heard of, or is it pretty much, let's let the free market reign and it'll correct itself? It's no talk that I've heard of or, or even read any articles that talk about leaning towards that. It's just let it rain and it, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. Yep, that's, and that's what I'm hearing too. And and I think that's the way we should, we should look at it. Let the free market work it out. Um Doug, Marcel, in any thoughts or words of wisdom for our listeners today, maybe some of your contractors, subcontractors, any, anything you want to? What, you know, what I tell people is, you know, kind of like forget the past. The norm of before is not the norm now. You have to have a whole new thinking uh, due to the fact of, pricing, how it's changing so quickly, the allocations we're facing with manufacturers, uh, the length of time to get material, uh, the trucking issue of how long it takes to get a shipment. Uh, I, I use an example of I just recently had a shipment leave uh, Mississippi on 527. It's being delivered today here on June the 8th. So it took that wow. long to get from Mississippi up here to Michigan. And Was that be a horse and buggy, or <laughs> <laughs> you know? But you know, and that and that just seems to be. Like I always say the the norm of before is not the norm of today. So you have to, you can't think what it used to be. You got to think what it is. And that. Yeah, I think from a from a contractor standpoint, they need to be more proactive. They need to communicate with guys like you to know what's happening and get a better feel for what it is that's coming and what they need. Um, to better prepare themselves, I think, for, uh, you know, for the project or, or for the long haul. We've, well, we've hey, pretty much told all of our customers that if you know you need some material and you're going to need it in six months, don't wait five months to buy it, buy it now, and you might still have it in six months. So yeah. most of them are listening and, and looking and, and doing that. But the other thing I want to point out is that uh, kind of earlier in your conversation, one thing that's helped us a lot has been our strong partnership with some of our manufacturers that we we really went to bed with a few people and gave them easily 90 percent or more of the business and that has helped us maintain getting product and staying competitive yeah. because they they saw what we did for them so they're helping us during these times and that so we kind sure, of talk nice about problem. that to our customers partner up with people on certain product groups but spread the wealth to make sure that you got yourself covered. Yeah, I, I think that's fantastic advice. Uh, hey, guys, on that note, uh, Doug and Marcel, thank you so much on behalf of all of the CAM membership for joining us today. And uh, we hope to have you on CAM's Building Michigan podcast again sometime soon. We thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you, you, Kevin. Appreciate Take it. care. Yep. Thank you for listening to Building Michigan, the official podcast of the Construction Association of Michigan, hosted by Kevin Kohler, CAM president. We appreciate you spending a part of your day with us. If you have a second, please share our podcast with industry colleagues. Leave us a review and connect with us at www.buildwithcam.com. That's all for now. Be sure to subscribe to Building Michigan wherever you get your podcasts and join us for the next episode. Today's episode of CAM's Building Michigan podcast is sponsored by Priority Health, endorsed health insurance carrier for CAM members. So right now, we've all been feeling lots of shifts in our lives. We've gone from crazy busy schedules to way more time with our loved ones, from commuting to the office to working from our couches. And that's okay, because Priority Health is always ready to shift right there with you. So whether you're experiencing a shift in employment or you're prepping for a new member of the family to arrive, Priority Health has you covered. Priority Shift. 
So maybe it's time your health insurance company did too. Find your plan at PriorityHealth.com. It's that time of year. Time to review your workers' compensation plan and ship to coverage that pays you back. CamCom, part of the Construction Association of Michigan, is the state's leading self-insured group designed for the construction industry. The safer your employees, the more money you get back. The average payback to members is 45% of their premium. A very smart investment. Find out how safety pays with CamComp. Call Juan Ramirez at 586-790-7810 or go to www.camcomp.net. The Construction Association of Michigan, CAM, has been helping commercial and industrial contractors and suppliers grow since 1885. They provide contractors leadership through aggressive lobbying, construction project reporting, safety and education training, industry promotion, insurance, and banking. Are you an owner, developer, or buyer of construction services? Hire a CAM member to get your project done on time and under budget. They are one industry, one resource, one CAM. Check them out at buildwithcam.com. 